So you've got the new reel. What's the first thing you do? Well, the first thing you do is you put this on. It's braid, it's 50 pound, and we refer to it as backing. What that backing does is it builds the reel up so that your fly line will in fact fill the spool. The analogy I give you is that if you imagine you're putting monofilament on a spinning reel, you want it as close to the lip as you can. Ditto your fly line there. And the reason I put 50 pound backing on my reels is that if you do get a fish that really tears away from you, bear in mind your fly line may be only 30 or 40 yards long, quite often, you know, once or twice a year you may get a big fella take you further than that, this backing keeps you in contact, sometimes at ranges of about 100 to 150 yards. I have, in my experience, had fish probably 150 yards away from me, relying totally on the back end. If we talk about fly lines, there are three basic types of fly line. First, traditionally, we use double taper lines in the UK. Now, when I say double taper, I want you to think of a line that's very, very thick in the middle and has a taper at either end. The taper ensures that when the fly turned over, it did so quite well. You know, you can imagine the splosh if there was a big thick line there. It tapered so that you got good turnover of the fly. The beauty of those lines was is that when one end wore out, you just turn the line round and you use the other end. Smashing. But they were very limited with regard to casting. They were quite hard to cast. I remember, you know, you could get 25, 30 yards, but it took a lot of effort. And that they do fish well, but like all things, we've developed further and faster. And so today, generally, people are using spay lines. I've got one on here. This is a line again referring on profile where you have, yes, a taper on one end, but then a section, probably 55, 65 feet of very, very thick line attached to very thin line, i.e. the weight is forward of that line so that when you cast, you cast a longer distance. And these lines have been developed. There are as many types of spay line as there probably are of Hoover or whatever, hundreds, but that's the general principle on which they work. And they're the lines that I recommend you start because they give you good casting ability and they're very, very easy to use. Personally, I've migrated with Scandinavian and Norwegian, Swedish, American influence to these guys, shooting heads. Only really in the last four or five years. So shooting heads are shorter, heavier lines which are cast outside the tip ring. If you're talking about double taper lines or spay lines, some of the line is inside the rod when you cast. With shooting heads, it's always outside. And basically, you're relying on the running line, which attaches it to the reel and to the backing, having the least amount of friction possible. So that shooting head just makes off into the distance, and it's only really aware that it's attached to the line when it all tightens up and drops. You can cast consistently some 40 meters with these lines, and they're used on big rivers. Now, we've talked about lines, profiles, distance. And what you can see here for the shooting heads is different colors of, of line. Now, what that really signifies is each of the lines is different in its property on how fast it sinks. Every line I refer to, whether it be double taper, a spay line, or these shooting heads, there are various degrees of sink rate with each one of the lines. They're marked as sink one, sink two, intermediate, float. You have to get used to the different manufacturers' way of expressing what they do. But if you're starting, and we're starting on spay lines, what I suggest you buy is a floating line, one that obviously floats on the surface of the water, an intermediate, which will make sure your fly is fishing just below the surface of the water, a sink two, which in colder water will take it down two or three feet, and perhaps a sink three if you really want to fish early in the season or late in the se season when the water's really cold and you need to give the fish eyeball to eyeball contact in four or five feet of water. Those four lines will take you through most of a season when you're first starting. And I'll give you a really good tip. I've mentioned backing lines, floating lines, running lines. These days, the easiest way of attaching a fly line to a backing line or a running line to a fly line is loop to loop. And the other thing you need to do is make sure, for instance, from backing to running line, the loop can go over the reel. And I'll show you when I get to the running line why. 
Most of the fly line to fly line joints that we use today are what we call loop to loop. And this running line that I have is a proprietary band you buy it from the shop. And what they've done is made a very big loop in the end. Now, you think, what's the relevance of that? Well, it's quite easy. I want to change my shooting line and it's loop to loop. I take the loop back through this way and that big loop will in fact go over the reel which means I can detach the line very very quickly and if I want to add a different kind of line all I need to do is put that loop through the loop on this different line pull it over the reel reel in and I've got it ready. The loop to loop connections are something we use all day every day now in salmon fishing and it saves absolutely oodles of time. These days the best way to finish your fly line is with a braided loop. These loops come you place them over the end of the line and they've got a small piece of tubing that fixes them actually onto the line and it grips and it won't come off. You can rely on that but what I tend to do to make sure that it isn't going to come off is I get some AquaSure brush it all over and then get a hair dryer and make sure that that's actually gone in and that the loop is in fact welded to the end of the fly line. But again it gives you a loop on the end of your line. Now leaders for salmon fishing don't have to be too sophisticated. You may in trout be using tapered leaders etc etc but don't bother with that in salmon fishing. If you're fishing early in the season you need 15 to 20 pound line just use it flat in the summer you may go down even to 10 pounds but all you need to do is tie a loop in the end of your line the way you would do normally get your fly put that through the loop pull it through and make sure that the two ends marry well and it doesn't bite and you've got your 8 to 10 foot of leader culminating in your fly. And it's no accident that on here I've got a simple yellow and black what we call tube fly because there are thousands of flies that you'll get in shops all over the country but if somebody said to me what colour fly would you use in the UK if you couldn't use anything else it would be a yellow and black fly for all times in the season. Flies, the hard thing to tell you about is flies because there are literally thousands of variations of flies. I've got drawfuls of flies that wouldn't see the light of day if I lived to be 150. But I've got to give you some sort of clue, so I will. Two main variations of fly, tube fly and a dress fly. The major difference is a tube fly is exactly a tube with the dressing on it and the fly is a separate piece of equipment. The beauty of tube flies is you can get some weight into them and also you can vary the size of the hook you're using. The hook, if you look at that profile, is an essential part of the allure of the fly. If it was smaller, the fly would take on a different, slightly different shape. So that's the sort of thing with tube flies. Very, very versatile. I use these for probably 60% of the season. And the other type of fly, is dress flies. This is where the fur or whatever you're using is dressed straight onto the hook. These are very much lighter and as you can see I've got a small range here. You can tie them as big or as small as you want but I use dress flies in the summer. Now why do I use small flies in the summer? That really is the key question and the big clue. The size of the fly you use depends upon water temperature. The warmer the water the smaller the fly you use. It's as simple as that. And just quickly to cover hooks, I'm very very set now these days on using double hooks, not trebles, singles, well I use them quite a bit but these are my mainstay. They're called Salar hooks, they're strong, very very strong, they come in different colours, black, silver, gold, 
I choose the colours to actually accentuate the colour of the fly I'm using. So if I'm using a silver fly, I'll probably use a silver hook with it. That is a tube fly, that is. If I'm using an orange fly, I might use a gold hook or a black hook. It all depends. It really does make quite a bit of difference to the profile of the fly, the colour of hook. But these guys, very strong, very, very strong in the barb as well. Um, you do get a lot of call these days for people to say, can you use barbless hook or debarbed? Barbless hooks in salmon fishing, a lot of people went on to them because they thought they were very environmentally friendly and good for the fish. Come away from them. I'll tell you for why, because on the short line you get a lot of bounce and they found that salmon played for 20 minutes, you'd lose them right at the very last minute and the salmon would float away never to recover. The thing about it is, what you need to do with a fish, once you've played it for 20 minutes, is land it. Because then you're the best person to support it in the water while it recovers. And that's its best chance of survival. A fish that's just allowed to wash away at the very last minute will in fact drown. It may sound daft, but fish can drown. So what you need to do, get the fish into your hands, hold it, and you make sure that it's absolutely ready to go before you part company with it. That's what we need to do to make sure that salmon stocks are there for the future. Here at Fishing TV, we've come up with a very special offer. If you buy a six month season ticket for our video on demand service, onlinefishing.tv, not only will you be able to watch all of our hundreds of programs whenever you want, as many times as you want, safe in the knowledge that there's always something new to see, but we'll also give you over 40 pounds worth of top quality line absolutely free. We've got together with the fishing line experts from Ultima to create four different packages designed to suit your type of fishing, whether you're a course, carp, game or sea angler. There's really never been a better time to join onlinefishing.tv. Light my fire! <laughs> Fish on, baby! Now that is slabber dabber ding dong. <laughs> oh, yes! Onlinefishing.tv. At last, a channel just for anglers. With original new series exclusive to the channel, Together with classic series and programmes from around the world never seen before on British television, you can now watch what you want, when you want, as many times as you want. Onlinefishing.tv. Welcome to your world. There are now two ways for you to enjoy Onlinefishing.tv. Subscribing at £4.95 a month on a minimum six-month membership entitles you to unlimited viewing of all our programs. Or you can pick and choose shows on a pay-per-view basis at just a pound per show. Whichever way you look at it, this is the place to get your fishing fix. Joined on Tackle Zone by Steve Cullen from Total Fly Fisher magazine, and we're asking him to bring in items of tackle that have caught his eye recently. And he's highlighted this, which is an, a new wading jacket from Grays. I'm going to be model for this, Steve, so yeah. you can tell me what you like about it. Now, I thought that you fly fishers tended to go out in good weathers, but this has got all sorts of weatherproof features, hasn't it? So tell me about them. It's got a lot of gadgets and gizmos, let me just say that. This is the extreme wading jacket for Grays. And there's a few things maybe that I could highlight here. Actually, there's more than a few things I could highlight here, but the, the one key factor is, is it's a wading jacket. So realistically, that's for your salmon angler fishing in the rivers, who's up to here usually. It's also for bank anglers come the winter time when the weather's a little bit iffy to say the least. March and early April as well, when it's quite cold and you've got some cold winds coming, you want a jacket like this. It's windproof, waterproof and breathable. And as you can see, it fastens nice and snug. Do I turn around for you? Yeah. Go on then. If we turn around here, we've got an adjustable hood. There's a little bit of wire in there that can adjust the peak. 
Gareth, if I could just get you a model of that, if you could turn around for the camera, please. I'm enjoying this, yeah. You look snug there. Uh -huh. But basically, depending on the shape of head you've got, you've got a boyish head, I would say. Yeah, big head, some people. Yeah, think. if yeah. you just turn around the camera like that, you can yeah. actually see. So you've got a moulded hood there that you can change however way you want. And the, the basis of that is if you've got a heart on there and you want to keep extra warm, you can get this hood over. You've also got the adjustable pull cords here. So I can pull that nice and tight into your face. Oh. Good. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Okay. I like these, I like these cuffs. Stop you, stop you getting water running up your arms. Well, the, that kind the of thing stuff. with these, Gareth, is if I just, if I can pull this out, I don't know which sleeve's best for the camera. This is neoprene. So it's quite flexible and it's quite tight as well. And this thing hugs close to your wrist. Now, when you've got this adjustable cuff on, you're basically pulling that tight. Now, the good thing with that is, as a fly fisherman, we're casting all the time. Mm. The first thing that happens when it's wet and raining down there. comes down your sleeve. Yeah. So that's what this is all about. And you've also got lots of pockets on this. Loads and loads of pockets. Yep. All waterproof, mm -hmm. lots and lots of space. There's also got a big pocket at the back. So do you want me to turn Yeah, yes, please. Again, yeah. See your best side. Yeah, thank you. We've got a big pocket here. So basically you can get, well, it's basically the whole back panel. You've also got drainage eyelets here. So if water does get in there, it's just got to drain away. So you've not got the weight of that water. I've got a D-ring, sorry Gareth. <laughs> We've got a D-ring here, which is perfect for putting your landing net on. That just clips in there nice and tight. So basically, cracking jacket, it's the right colour for fly fishing because at the end of the day you don't want to be spooking stuff. It's like a two-tone olive. Gareth, if I can get you to turn around. There you go, yep. There you I, go, very say, smart. Mate, it's, it's dead, dead comfortable. I suppose, the, it? I suppose the idea, if you're wading away, you don't need an extra bag with this. Everything will everything be on your person, won't it? Everything's on yeah. your person. And I think one more point, Gareth, is us fly fishers, we need lots of movement. We don't want yeah. tight clothing. Yeah. We need lots of free, freedom of movement. Yeah. And that's what this thing offers you. Like you the old casting action there? Very good casting action. No, it's very, very comfortable. I mean, knowing greys, it's always high quality. I, I yeah. imagine it comes at a bit of a price, this. 179.99, that yeah, is. Yeah, that doesn't particularly shock me. You no. Know, it feels really good quality. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you're after a wading jacket, I would have thought it's one to look at, but you're the man. Yeah, it'll, it'll last you a long time. Yeah.